The next bar to install is the piece that goes across the windshield, tying the two front bars together with the rear bar and forming what they call the halo that goes over the passenger's head and provides stiffness and protection uh, on the top of the car. And a trick that we learned to hold these tubes in place is to use a simple hose clamp. You can put a hose clamp around the tubes that are already installed and it will help you to position the piece that you're going to put in. And there is so much checking and adjusting with this process because you want to make sure that the tubes are you know, parallel and square, but also that they line up right with the car so that everything looks right. And again, being uh, installed on a chassis jig like we were doing, we knew that the car was square to the jig so that the cage was square to the car. We've seen cages in the past where you sit in the driver's seat and you run your fingers across that top tube and your fingers get pinched in a different place you know, on the driver's side than the passenger side because that tube or the cage or something isn't square. We really wanted to make sure that this was as square as we could possibly make. Next up were the two down bars that go from the main hoop uh, through the rear package shelf and attached to the original frame rails in the back of the car. And because our car is a little bit different, we deviated from the uh, Chassis Works G Street kit and kind of designed our own down bars. Our car has uh, a Detroit Speed deep tub, wheel tub kit, plus their Quadrilink rear suspension, which adds a horizontal transverse uh, cross member where the rear suspension attaches to. So in this design, we didn't necessarily have to run those rear bars all the way to the rear frame rail. We decided to have them end right on that Detroit Speed cross member uh, because that is where all the forces are translated from the rear axle up through the suspension and into the body tub. And to do this, uh, rather than just start with a, a straight piece of tube and start bending it and hope you get it right, uh, we used some quarter inch pencil rod, uh, which is a lot cheaper and easier to work with, making sure that we had enough space to accommodate the one and three quarter inch tube of the actual cage. And once we mocked up where we wanted all that stuff to go, we used a tubing bender to bend the uh, one and three quarter inch tube and create those bars. And they don't just bend in one direction downward, uh, they also kick inward a little bit to clear the wheel tubs. And again, our goal was to conceal this cage as much as possible, so we put a little extra time into making sure it fit as tightly as it could. By this point, the design was set, all the pieces were tack welded together, and it was time to do the finish welding. And another trick that we learned is to keep the base of the roll cage uh, removable and drop the whole cage down in the holes in the rocker panels to give you access to get your welding torch around it because once this thing's in the car it's not like it's ever coming out. So we used a small TIG torch and slid those feet out of the way, lowered the cage and did all the final welding around all of the main tubes and then lifted the cage back up again, put the feet back over the rockers and welded all that stuff solid. We MIG welded those feet to the rocker panels uh, because we had to do a, a higher fill rate than a simple TIG rod and it was easier and faster to do it with the MIG welder than build up a lot of TIG. When the cage was solid in the car, we added the horizontal crossbar that goes behind the seats. And this one can be tricky also. This is removable in this kit. It's got a clevis design where you can pull the pins and take the bar out if you ever want access to the rear seat. Uh, but you got to make sure that you test fit this with the seats in place uh, so that your front seat has enough room for the driver to be comfortable. Uh, it's very tempting to just put it in there and if you uh, don't pay attention, the driver will be sitting too close to the steering wheel. So this kit comes with a bar that is bent to accommodate that and then you have to position it where you need it to be. This bar is also part of the restraint system in the car, so you want to make sure that if you have a three-point or a five-point seat belt that it all interacts properly and safely and that the height of that rear bar is such that your seat belts aren't too low holding the driver down you know you want to make sure that they're comfortable and safe and your seat belt manufacturer should have a diagram of where to put those belt attachment points in the car. The last thing in the car was to supplement the cage with the supplied gussets that came with the kit. Okay, so once the cage was all welded up, our build process progressed and we got the car off the chassis jig and put the subframe back in it and had it on its wheels. And at this point, 
we fitted up not only the engine and transmission but all the suspension to make sure the car was basically at its proper driving weight so that the resting fitment of all the panels would be as it were when the car was finished. Uh, and then we added the two front struts that go from the firewall to the front of the subframe. And uh, Chassis Works uses what's called a Gemini connector for this. It's a circular coupler that you weld the base to the subframe and then you bolt the top of the bar to the firewall and it allows that front bar to be removable in case you ever want to detach the subframe or if you're racing the car and you get in a wreck and you need to remove that stuff, it just uh, unbolts from the car. Once it was finished, we were very happy with the way it looked. Uh, it achieved the goal, it fits nice in the car and it's going to add a ton of rigidity to the subframe area plus the rest of the body tub itself all the way through the rear suspension. And you can see more detailed photographs of the install on our website at v8tvshow.com slash lose change.